Chapter 101, Smooth Plan Translator, Shu Editor, Clown Founding Demon Capital Arc Chapter 101, Smooth Plan We went to the last floor where Veldora and Will live and arrange the interior. I take out all of the furniture out from my stomach and set them in room cordoned off by blocks. Atmosphere is really important, so I can't let the public see it. I copied and prepared some items that Veldora likes. And after we finished decorating the room, we proceeded to the center of the 100th floor and had Veldora release his aura. Veldora released his aura carefully and managed to do so without an accident. The inner walls of the room were created out of ore. It going to turn into demonic steel soon after getting bathed with magic power after all, so it's a simple mod wall. This way, we can save a bit on costs. By the way, the first floor of this dungeon is a square room 250 meters wide. It's the same size as four Tokyo domes, but as you continued further down, the size got smaller. The dungeon was created this way so the ore could spread well. Veldora's room is 100 square meters wide. It seems quite big, but if Veldora get into his real form, it actually quite small. It was created so it can be expanded if it's ever inconvenient. The dungeon is under Raymery's control, so it can be customized freely to some degree. The aura is seeping up to each floor as planned. Since there's no wall to block the way, it fills the room without disturbance. All we have to do now is to wait until the monsters spawned. After Veldor turned back into his human form, we moved on to the next step. First, about traps. Poisoned arrow arrows smeared with poison come flying out of nowhere. Poison swamp swamp that is really poisonous. If you fall into one, you'll get poison damage and abnormal status. Turning tile, mad driving your sense of direction mad. Feel the importance of mapping. Moving tile, mad a floor that moves all by its own. Really scary. Cutting thread pass by it without realizing, your head comes off. Combined with moving floor for brutal results. Pitfall rather than the damage dealt by falling down, what's awaiting you when you fall is scarier. False treasure box mimic great, a treasure box. Too bad. It's me. Laughing treasure box great, a treasure box. Die laughing. Monster room hi there. Finally, a feast. Ceiling room turn a fire on end. Darkness floor it's a common sense to bring a torch you know. If you don't have one, we could sell one for a high price, how about it? Low ceiling floor I don't want to meet monster while crawling. Terrain effect floor what the hell is this? Why there's a volcano in a dungeon. I listed all of the trap I could think of. Almost all of them are possible. It's just the terrain effect floor is too difficult. Well, volcano is impossible as expected. I was imaging having blazing floor, freezing floor, or blizzard floor that makes traps from natural disasters, but. Impossible. I don't have the energy to maintain something like that. As expected, it's impossible. Well, I might have asked for something really absurd. And when I was going to give up on that plan. Do you want me to tame a fire dragon or ice dragon from somewhere? I hear the voice of someone that shouldn't be there. As I turn around I could see silver-haired Dwintail. Hey! Why are you here? Milim. One hundred floors underground. In the other word, in the last floor of the newly built dungeon, a beautiful young demon lord is smiling with a complacent smile. Foo fun. Somehow I feel that you're doing something fun. To think you were courageous enough to exclude me. She said while getting arrogant and arching her back to emphasize her pitiful chest. As usual, she's dressed all in black with dragon knuckles that are emitting a dim light and hardly fit on her hands. Still, as expected, she's really sensitive to this kind of conspiracy. No doubt, it's impossible to hide things from Milim. In the first place, it's impossible to reason with Milim. Just because she appeared here, there's no need to be surprised. Milim and Veldora glared at each other, but afterwards shaked hands and seemed friendly. If the two of them fight with each other, it'll be a serious matter. 
Thank goodness they have become friends. Sorry about that. I had no intention to leave you behind. I was going to invite you after it was done. Really? But it's more fun to participate from the get-go when doing something like this. Well, that might be true. By the way, is your country all right? She's also a demon lord. Moreover after merging her territory with the former demon lords Frey and Carrion's territory, it should have gotten rather big. Is it okay for her to play and walk around like me? Me? I'm good. Everyone is really excellent, so it's better that I don't disturb them. Upon hearing my question, she averted her gaze. Well, it's fine. See, I'm really excellent after all. By no means have I come here by running away because I hate studying. I see. Frey or the other examined and summarized the country's state of affair and tried to teach it to mill him. She hated it and ran away to this place. That's probably the real situation. No way. I'm going to join no matter what. Before I say anything, she refused. As expected. Her intuition is sharp as usual. Well, whatever. I'm not the one that's going to get scolded anyway. Rather than that. Alright, I'm not the one that's going to get yelled at, so let's put that matter aside. What you said before, taming a dragon. Is that possible? Ugh. I really will get scolded? No, but. It can't be helped. There's bound to be some danger when you venture out. It's possible to tame a dragon. If you want, should I tame one for you? Ooh, can I rely on you? In that case what species are there? Milam fears getting scolded, just like a kid that skipped their homework to go play. Well, it can't be helped. It's the path she took. After overcoming her worried expression, Milam's mood changed easily as she teach us about dragons. Seems like Veldor had no interest in it at all. Raymaris is saying something like what are you doing coming to this place? Just to get glared at by Milim and caught. From Milim's explanation, there are four types of dragons. Fire dragon, ice dragon, wind dragon, and earth dragon. There are some that gained special evolution or unique, but these are the only four types. As expected it's impossible to tame a dragon lord, but as long it's not a lord, it's possible to tame an adult one. With this, having an effect similar to terrain effect is possible. And so we'll have the dragons live on the lower floors. I don't really know just how strong a dragon is, but practically every dragon is at least in A rank. It's the level that could be defeated by six holy knights. An elemental dragon is bound to increase the difficulty. Thus, while being carefree, of course, I arrange the dragon floors. In order of strength, fire swine the earth. Or so it would be if the dragon is young the order might get changed at it's an old one. That is, the dragon that is able to exercise all of its power will arise victorious. If it's the order from strength only and it became like that. And so. 99th floor is flame hell floor being covered in high temperature flame, the last gateway. Heat resistant equipment is needed. The one that waiting before it is? 98th floor is ice hell floor. If you stop, you die. Can you endure it with cold resistant equipment? 97th floor is lighting floor. The threat of lighting falling down from the sky. Whether you can break through this floor or not depend on your luck. 96th floor is drammer floor. As to ridicule the one that managed to come this far, a fiendish earthquake will befall you. Feel the wrath of the dragon. And so the super hard terrain floors have been created. The dragons could use the aura that Veldora released as food, so they could live here with no problem. There's no need to tamper with these floors. Just let the dragons that Milim tamed make a nest here and it'll be fine. Next, create a safe zone every ten floors. Well, there's a boss room before each, so they could only access it after they defeated the boss. There, they would be able to purchase magic stones, sell drops, and buy potions at very high prices. Building a tavern or a restaurant might be a good idea, but would they just exit the dungeon if they wanted a break? Well, I'll decide on that as things go. 
The first floor difficulties is for testing only. So any beginner could finish it. The roads are wide, so getting lost is unlikely. Nevertheless, 250 meters in width is considerable. It's going to be a floor that makes you walk a lot without any result, income. From then on, starting with the second floor it's not that easy. It's time for the traps. Even though I say it won't be easy, in reality there isn't a single brutal trap up until the 10th floor, so I'm sure they'll proceed without any major difficulties. Immediately facing a death trap would dissuade people from continuing, so it's out of the question. In this manner, while arguing about this and that, the four of us proceeded to arrange every floor. And thus, after three days, we are almost done fine-tuning it. We nod to each other with smiles on our faces, leaving the dungeon with a feeling of accomplishment. Needless to say, the dungeon is filled with monster by the next time we went there. Milan went out to tame the dragons. I don't particularly mind the monsters getting destroyed, but that's a no-no for the dragons. We assigned all the tame dragons as Raymery's subordinates. Get this, inside Raymery's dungeon creation her subordinates are immortal. If Raymery's got killed, she'll disappear, but the subordinates could respawn at the recorded spot. This is the reason why she wanted Beretta so much. Even if Raymerys doesn't have any power, inside the dungeon, Raymerys troops are undefeatable. For Raymerys who doesn't have any subordinates, it's just a meaningless invincible skill. Beretta himself serves as tea without any complaint busily fulfills a mage's function. Since it seems that Beretta consents, working for Raymerys might not be so bad. With this, I finally gain real subordinates. Said Raymerys clearly emotional. She might be really lonely. So while looking at Beretta. Oi, Beretta. Do you want to be Raymery's permanent servant? I ask Beretta. I've been thinking of this for a while. If Beretta wants it, I'll let him change his loyalty. If Beretta didn't want to, I'll prepare a new subordinate for Raymery's. Beretta answered. Is it all right? Then I'll swear my allegiance to Raymery Sama, as her servant. He said without any hesitation. Isn't it good, Raymerys? You're unexpectedly loved. I nodded. Fine. Well, then Beretta. From now on, you shall work under Raymerys. I declared, lifting the master lock and transferring it to Raymerys. Who's of course clearly dumbfounded by what has just occurred. A. Hey, thank you very much for everything up until now. I won't forget the favor of letting me be born into this world. Don't worry about me. From now on, work hard and protect Rain Reese. A. Even at the cost of my life. Let's believe him. If it's Beretta, I don't have to worry. The transfer concluded without any problem. From now on, I'll only be the submaster. As long as nothing happens to Rain Reese, Beretta will only listen to Rain Reese's command. Raymerys who finally managed to understand the situation pranced around in delight. She might be really delighted. But, it's fine. Controlling the dragons inside the dungeon all by herself might be too difficult. So if Beretta is there when she needs him, there will be no problem. It also seems like Beretta doesn't want to hand over the position as the first servant since Beretta has been serving her for a while. Veldora and I start to get fed up while look at the pranting Raymerys. Being a formal master-servant relationship, Beretta became an immortal inside this dungeon. Servant can only revive at a previously set location, but there are no revival limits. With a sufficient number of troops, Raymerys ability is terrifying. And it's because she's the owner, that this ability has yet to see the light of day. I'm not going to tell her but depending on its use it could easily sway any battle. Even now, having Beretta with unlimited rebirths is too overpowered. Now, we're also adding Milim's dragons. There's a chance that this kid will soon have an unbelievably potent power in her hands. But, it's Raymerys after all. There won't be any problem. This lovable fairy is just a small lonely kid. The revival item called Bracelet of Revival is also recognized by Raymerys, so anyone who wears it will not die. 
but, it'll have no effect outside this dungeon. If this thing isn't explained completely, there's a possibilities of misunderstandings. And then while confirming various things, the dungeon is getting shaped steadily. What's this airtight room for? Is this also a trap? To that question. If you suddenly enter into a room without air, you'll fall from not being able to breath. At worst die. You have to be careful in front of any room. This is an ironclad rule. Examine the poison inside the room, measure the concentration of air. If you can't do at least this much, you won't be able to last long. At worst, you have to use wind magic for ventilation. I answered, seems like she didn't understand. Well, I know that this is an atrocious trap. You. I've been thinking this for a while, but you're a terrifying guy. But, reliable. I wouldn't have been able to think of this kind of trap all by myself. Raymary said while looking at the traps with admiration. So that's what she thinks of me. Well, I liked games in my previous world, so it's a trap that I've gotten used to. If you tell me to clear it in real life, though, I beg to differ. There's almost no one unaffected by poison and having no need to breathe like us. I think it's going to be a brutal dungeon. The completed masterpiece can hardly be described with only brutal. Well, if you add monster to those kinds of vicious traps, of course it's going to be fiendish. I feel like I heard a voice, but it's probably just my imagination. However, I bet I'll hear it again soon enough. After finishing the creation of the dungeon, I return to city. Veldora and Raymarys will probably happily finish the rest by themselves. They were very interested in watching me set up the traps. They also asked to allow them to set one up, but I refused primarily due to wanting to avoid a sick joke before the tenth floor. Otherwise the customer, adventurers, will have their hearts or minds broken and will be unable to proceed. However, I did decide to leave the rest to them on the condition that the floor must be passable. 95th and 94th floors will probably end up being nonsensical floors, but it's okay. 91st to 93rd floors are untouched. Miller might want to do one, so we'll set it up later. And so, I leave the rest to them. It's good to see them enjoy themselves this much. By the time I got back to the city, my Ormels had arrived. He must have prepared himself with a great haste. His arrival is way faster than what I had planned. I led him to the mansion I've prepared beforehand and leave the rest to Rigurdo. I say my thanks to my Ormels and briefed him on the new happenings. I explained the location of the arena and the plans for building a tavern town there. I also told him about the plan to attract adventurer with the newly built dungeon. Rigurdo and my Ormels were shocked to hear that and it turned into quite a discussion. Rigurdo wanted to discuss the type of people who will come here from now on. My Ormals discussed the opening of the arena and the dungeon. After listening to their opinions, we proceeded to discuss the necessary resources. They quickly became good friends. I told Rigurdo to treat my Ormals as the official leader of the business division. I also told him that my Ormals will get a second post as the leader of publicizing. Rigurdo nodded and contacted the individuals that would benefit said divisions. Thus preparation continue. My Ormels was accepted as the resident of Tempest easily. I only introduced him and let the other introduce themselves. The flow was so smooth it left me surprised. Anyways, after seeing my Ormels work ethic, they can't have any complaints left. My Ormels evinced that he's able to grasp the abilities of the subordinates that were assigned to him. And, including his entourage, he assigned jobs to each member individually. Seeing a hierarchy completed in a blink of an eye is rather refreshing. My Ormels is really lively for being responsible for two divisions. Now, as for the invitations to various leaders and figureheads. Excluding the person I personally know, we send the invitation under my Ormels name. Influential nobles and wealthy merchant of each town. His progress is so quick that you'd think he had been doing this his whole life. We also drafted up procedure and costs for the upcoming events. Not just the planning and management, 
but things are producing smoothly on all fronts. Looks like I chose the right person. Perhaps out of all the ideas I've thus implemented, choosing my ormals was the best. If you were not here, the possibility of things going awry is high. With just our power, we couldn't have performed this well. I'm really fortunate to be able to meet good people. My Ormels also feel charmed by the food, environment, and comfort of this town. Impossible. This is impossible. It's even more comfortable compared to the royal capital. He kept saying until it basically became his catchphrase. I'm glad that he liked it. Then again, my Ormels reaction is the primary evidence that everything will be fine. And my Ormels himself knows it. Rimuru Sama, there's no way this plan is going to fail. With everything as it is, anyone could make it succeed. My Ormals said. Filled with excitement. I think anyone is a bit too much, but I'm happy to hear him say that. And as the preparations progress, unfamiliar people start coming to the town. I feel a heated season approaching. And it is nigh upon us. If you find any errors, broken links, non-standard content, etc., please let us know report chapter so we can fix it as soon as possible. Chapter 102, Audience with Monsters Audience with Monsters One and a half months have passed since I had ascended to a demon lord. The construction of the Colosseum has also progressed well. Jiryudo's command and capacity for construction has allowed the project to progress just as planned. 1. Furthermore, the youngest of the three dwarf brothers, Mildo, had actually revised my blueprint and made it into a gorgeous building with a high artistic value. As expected from the dwarf, no, this was the work of a true artist. Simply splendid craftsmanship. With this, the workmanship can even please those from royal families. For me, who has a rather low level of artistic capacity, it's quite helpful to have someone around with such talents. Even with Mildo's additions, there will still be plenty of time before my debut and the tournament are scheduled to begin. Regarding Underground Labyrinth Dungeon, the prospect for it was very good, too, there were still various things that I wanted to look into further, such as the labyrinth's design but I had to entrust the remaining details to Ramiris and Valdora. Though there were plenty of things I wanted to get involved in, I simply don't have the time to help out with everything. To celebrate my ascension, or rather, to truly ascertain it whether I really am a demon lord, the representatives of various races have begun gathering one after another at the monster's country tempest. It would seem that they wish to swear their loyalty to the demon lord, and as a result, gain the divine protection that such a lord could provide. However, if said demon lord lacked the ability to lead, said lord would surely plunge them into a certain path of destruction, rather than prosperity. Until now, the great forest of Jura was under the divine protection of Valdora, who had protected the region, turning it into a non-aggression zone. The non-aggression area was now governed and under control of the new demon lord. This region was now under the governing body of the newest demon lord who suddenly appeared. Moreover, it became known to most that this demon lord was still quite a novice at such things. To discover that the new protector of the forest was such a being, certainly it would not be unreasonable for the representatives of said races to feel rather insecure about their futures. Today, I was dressed in ceremonial fashion. Today, I was worshipped as a great demon lord in the appearance of slime. It would seem that I've already been turned into an ornament and treated like the like Kagami Machi 3, that decorates Sukami Da 4. Wouldn't it just be fine to leave a clone instead of me having to sit here? Well, I did say this, but it was immediately rejected with smiles. Yep, it sure is so wonderful that the department heads are in complete agreement at times like this. I really appreciate their desire to have me wait here. Reluctantly, I was displayed and was requested not to move. Honestly, I was amazed at their preparation for the event to the extent that they even had magic clothes for a slime prepared and everything. I looked down upon the kneeling monsters who wished for an audience with me. I think that such formalities such as dressing up and kneeling are unnecessary, but showing dignity is important. 
reluctantly I had to go along with the department's demands. It can be said that the usual slime version form didn't have dignity. Well, I don't really care. However, what was interesting were the reactions from the various races. Because I didn't do or say a thing, as if I was an ornament, I silently cast my gaze upon the monsters as they introduced themselves. The reactions could be said to be divided into three groups. These were those who held admiration, those who were observing, and finally, those who held great fear. From those who were observing, there were even a few that were looking down on me a bit, but that might end up being rather convenient. The real problem falls with those who are frightened. Those often cause the real problems. I accepted an audience while thinking on it further. The first people who I granted an audience were those who believed in my capabilities and held great respect for me. Mostly those who I have already established ties to previously. This time, it was the Lizardman's Chief Five, Gabal's father, and clan heads of the High Orc. It has been a long time, Rimurudano. No. I should say Demon Lord Rimuru Sama. On such a joyous occasion, we also six Gabal's father. Seeing as he was so tense and talked stiffly, I cut him off. Ah, it certainly has been a long time, Chief. There's no need for you to be talking so formal. I'm quite indebted to you for the alliance, so please treat me well from now on, just as you have before. Rimuru. So I spoke. With that, I managed to dispel his troubles and his worries seemed to disappear. After that, he seemed to be able to return to his original bold personality suited to the leader of a species. No no. There is no reason for such kind words, Rimuru Sama. By the way, that Gible. Has he been any use to you? Honestly. That good for nothing son. To the public, Gable was exiled and disowned by his father. From his tone, it doesn't seem like there was any intention to recall him back publicly right now. His father is a serious person, but he also has many good qualities about him and is a good leader. As I was pondering this, I suddenly ended up with an idea. Oh, that's right, Chief. Allow me to give you the name of Bill. After all you are Gable's father, or rather for you having no name is a bother. Rimuru. Oh, it was the nostalgic name granting. I emphasize the father's part, I do want to have this disownment problem solved slowly. And, I also don't forget to persuade him indirectly. I wonder if you noticed my intent? Chief. No, a bill nods with his thanks. As your will. I swear upon this name, my loyalty to Rimuru Sama. I shall never forget any moment of this. A bill. So, he says and nods with great vigor. He then departed from this place. I passed a wink over to the waiting Riger to have him guide a bill towards Gibble's residence. Riger nodded and left with a bill. By the way, it was certain that a bill will evolve into Dragonet. The name bestowed quite a large amount of divine protection onto him and cost a bit of power, but it's still a problem that I'm naming people thoughtlessly. Above all, I don't have intention to do that. Please excuse me from a death march. 7. This time, naming the head was a form of gratitude for Gable's efforts, but in the future I must control my tendencies to name people. Continuing after a bill was clan heads of the High Orc, they had come to offer their greetings with only a few people as escort. They didn't bring any guards with them, maybe because they trust me fairly highly. The several people they did bring were their child and grandchildren. Naturally, their food situation were improved, their lifestyle also improved. Above all, the children were born, and that every child was born as a high orc. Because of that they felt a great level of astonishment and joy, they wanted to report it to me directly. I thought to myself that it would only be natural that their children would become high orcs, but I was told that it was actually exceptionally rare. As it would turn out, the birth of a variant would normally be limited to a single generation. With their birth rates now decreased, they could now focus on child care and development. As the future working force, I instructed them to raise the children with great care. A child was a treasure. Even in a different world, this still remain as an unchanging truth. 
I had been worried about how they would manage, but it would seem bestowing names onto each of them turned out to be the right decision. I had wondered it might have gotten complicated for them to use the names that I gave them, but it seems that using their names came naturally to them. I'm glad. Oh well, they might not get used to it. But after a while, they will get used to be called with that name. Since they originally got along just fine without any names at all without problems, I was probably just worrying too much. As the last member that composed the Great Jura Forest Alliance, the Treants 8 also came to offer their greetings. Well, I say the Treants, but since they can't move, the one that came was actually the Dryads 9, Trainee Sand from before. As usual, I sense a large pool of magical power. It's been a long time, Rimuru-sama. Our congratulations for your ascension to a demon lord. Trainee san Without any hesitation, she offered her greetings. I was also helped by her in the past, so I owe her and the Treants quite a bit. From there we ended up discussing our mutual relationship. As for now, it seems there wasn't any immediate problem, but it seemed that moving was troublesome for her. Actually, before meet Ray Nissan's body become rather thin. Well, this and that. Until the Fairy Queen has completed her reincarnation, we had to remain behind. Since we couldn't move freely, we can only manage this much. Ray Nissan. Did. She just say something interesting. Fairy Queen. No dot 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 she doesn't mean. That should be Koten, was such an outrageous person. In my mind, I can only remember Ray Maurice's innocent smiling face. Hey, really? The Fairy Queen you say? Do you know the name? Rimuru. Yes, it's the great Ray Maurice Sama. Several thousand years ago, it was she who arbitrated with evil people, and after that her appearance vanished. Ray Nissan. I want to pretend I don't hear anything. The Raymaris in my mind and the Raymaris in Trainee Sans' image were absolutely not match. I'm certain of that. However, it seems that she was always waiting for her return. She must never think that the Fairy Queen had become one of the Demon Lords. Should I let her know and then recruit them as my subordinates? Um. I may have a clue about such person, but. Rimuru. E? Is that. Is that true? Trey Nissan. She reacted with earth-shattering power after hearing my words. Let's just introduce her. If she saw that Chibiko, she might get disillusioned. Though, I never expected that Raymaris was actually someone important. I will not be discouraged. Resolving my will, I decided to let Trey Nissan meet Raymaris. The result. The impressed Trey Nissan weeps greatly. Seriously. Raymaris was the reincarnated, form of the Fairy Queen. Ah, that unchanging beauty, the elegant appearance. Trey Nissan. Trey Nissan was admiring while choking because of the tears of gratitude. Who do you said that again? I don't really understand. Especially, the elegant part. Even if you search Raymaris from top to bottom you would found nothing that match with the description. You heard that? Hey. You heard just a moment ago, right? You, just get a better opinion of me, right? Raymaris. Proudly, Raymaris came over and began boasting towards me. Annoyingly. She flying and buzzing around me. How dat? Raymaris. Such feeling, she really overjoyed. Oh well, I don't care. To meet with comrade by chance was a happy event. By the way, to had joyous reunion was just the first part, so I spoke once again. Anyway, how about moving into Raymaris's labyrinth? You see, since that place is near Tempest and it was also Raymaris's territory, you know? Rimuru. Ah. That's might be good. The floor can be enlarged easily, there are also a lot of empty floor, there also a jungle forest floor too. Raymaris. Raymaris agreed with my proposal. After all, inside the labyrinth Raymaris's subordinates will be immortal. Since they will end up serving their original role, I decided to make such a suggestion. However, as a someone who lives in Jura Forest, 
shouldn't we will be affiliated under Rimurasama. Trey Nisan. Trey Nisan was seriously worried about that. The actual place, when I gave Ramaris the permission to establish the labyrinth, I also granted her extraterritorial rights on that place. The inside of the labyrinth was under both of my and Ramaris's control, it was a special area under the administration of a joint sovereignty. 11. As I explaining that and I also added that for now immigration wouldn't be an issue. Although Trey Nisan was hesitating. She quickly recovered and decided to consult about this matter with the Truant elders. After that, she returned using teleportation. As expected of someone with the ability to manipulate the magic power of nature, she had quite the convenient skill. Although it looked like spatial transfer, its invocation was quick. But if I use my analysis ability, I would probably be able to learn it soon. After three days, the consultation between the elders had been completed smoothly and Trey Nisan once again came. She then immediately requested for an audience, and the first thing she spoke was. We, the Treant and Dryad, would like to relocate under the protection of Ramaris Sama. Can you give us your approval, Rimaru Sama? Trey Nisan. Her request was stated as so. Naturally, I gave out my approval to her. Thank you very much, Trey Nisan. After I gave my consent, Trey Nisan was elated. However, there was one problem, how on earth were they going to relocate the gigantic trees? That was the question. However, even so the solution was unexpectedly easy. Ramaris will open the labyrinth door over there, and transfer them as they were to the labyrinth. Because, I don't think that the treants could relocate by themselves. However, since Ramaris' subordinates will be increasing, then it could lead the labyrinth inside to become stabilized in the coming weeks. The increased control of the magic power and air management will make running the labyrinth remarkably easier. And, although the numbers of the Dryad was only a few, they were suited as the guides inside the labyrinth. The 95th floor was established as the residence of the Treants to reside they could replace Ramaris and Veldor to establishing that floor. Thus it will become a floor stage of overgrown greeneries. That floor had the widest area, with a diameter of 5 kilometers. And, around the door that lead to the 96th floor was the last record site safe point 12, and there would also establishment like in and etc. before the boss. They could also open a business-like equipment shop that offered high-quality weapons and armors in their storefront, which can only be found and purchased here. But since the customers visiting will be very rare, I don't doubt that opening the shop will just be a hobby. Surrounding the area was the complete Adrian's village. Thanks to the thick magical power concentration, everyone could live vividly. I also got the agreement of the Dryads to help with the management of the labyrinth. Rather, it was the other party that wished to be useful. I believe I have secured a group of loyal lawn cooperative workers. Later on, on that floor, one forest-type city will be founded. A city that can fear solace, for those who suffered many struggles to penetrate the jungle. It was known as the Labyrinth City, the flourishing metropolis of illusions. A town that won't grant its blessing to anyone except for those who could successfully reach it. However, that was still a story in the future, which even for my current self couldn't imagine happening. Minus 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 minus. After that, the second group of those who observing me. Those people were people of high ranking race from Great Jura Forest. As for the breakdown, they were the representative from Tenu 13, Gaza 14, and Mezu 15, race. The Tenu reside in the mountain range near where the High Ark Mountain clan settled. Furthermore, they had established their village before the gate to some other realm on an inaccessible mountain summit. Although it was once believed that there could be no one capable of inhabiting that place, it seems that those of high ranking races aren't bothered so much by such environments. As the representative of their elder, the granddaughter, a youthful girl named Mamaji, came bearing their greetings. 
though the male's nose was long just like their name 16, the females of the species have normal ones as it would turn out. What stands out was that their skin color is rather reddish. Or perhaps that the male's noses aren't as long as I thought they would be. Well, I suppose if it was too long, it would become an inconvenience, so perhaps this is to be expected. However, this race, their pride was surprisingly high. The very first thing that she said to me was, HMPH, to think that there would come an age where we would come to be ruled over by a lowly slime. How amusing. So amusing, I can't laugh at it. Oh well, what's done is done. We will give our recognition of your rule over this forest. However, we won't tolerate if you meddle in our affairs. Mamaji. So, she declared in front of the department heads. Twitching, Shin was started to burst out. But, the surprising thing was she able to restrain herself? Whatever things that were changing inside that girl's mind, she won't lose herself in rage over these small matters. Although it was a good tendency, it was. Somewhat eerie at the same time. However, it may be accumulated and exploded. I stopped looking at the changes on Shin behavior. I see, I can come to an understanding of the Tenu's intentions. On the matter of not interfering with your affairs, we will also won't send any assistance to you either. Is this arrangement fine with you? Benamaru. Benamaru, taking the role of the representative asks her. As for what had been said, if you didn't want to accept being ruled by Demon Lord, then you won't be ruled. If it was another Demon Lord, s. He may annihilated people who shown disrespect behavior. But, I was generous and didn't care about such thing. Or rather, it was quite troublesome. Moreover, I already told everyone to do what they think will be best for the race that gives such reaction. When Benamar received those words, he was only reconfirming it. Yes, that's fine. Mamadi. As such, when she gave her answer, I offered a nod. And then, Benamaru take over the conversation. I see. Then, let's go with the non-intervention with each other. However, please acknowledge the privilege of the high orc that settles down upon the mountain. Do you also want to perform trade agreement like food or other goods? Benamaru. That's true. The mountain's blessings are not within our right to claim. For things like mineral ores, it is practically things that are useless for us. Regarding the high arcs that have settled upon the mountains, we will just leave them alone. We just didn't want other party interfere with our affairs. So long as we will not be called for any military purpose, then it will be fine. Mamadi. We understand. There is no problem about this agreement. As for the military, you will not need to be concerned about it. I think that it's more preferable for the military to use volunteer system. This talk ends here. Well then, since you have had to trouble yourself to come to this country from far away, why don't you rest before you return? Oh yes, the warrior of this country had planned to hold a tournament. It's an exhibition, or perhaps I should say an entertainment. I think that this is a spectacle that will be rarely seen. I'm certain, that you will be enjoying this. Benamaru. The conversation ended on such a note. I haven't heard about military voluntary system, I became a little surprised and also impressed. For forming a desirable friendly relationship, because she had troubling herself to came here, and then sees the tournament. I think she will return after enjoying herself in this country. But, the granddaughter of the Tangu's elder, Mamaji was. Fufu. I want to see what kind of level the subordinate of the slime. Anyway. I think that it was just a good strike of luck for it to become a demon lord, right? 17 Mamaji. She impudently declared such words, and then immediately departs. But, to directly declaring her own intention and asking me to agree with her, her personality must not a meek one. After Mamaji had left. Though I endured it, isn't that too much? Shin. So Shin starts speaking. Indeed. I'm also a bit irritated. Benamaru. Even Benamaru too. Well, maybe it because she belongs to a high race, that can be classified as rank A. 
Certainly, they were powerful. Even if they want to have non-intervention, there was no need for them to be unreasonably deprecating themselves. So, that was I had thought. What sort of behavior was that? It was not as if we had asked them to become a subordinate, what was with such unchecked hostility? Or rather, I thought that it would be better for them to hand over the claim on the mountain. It isn't like we can honestly afford to stop harvesting the various resources of the mountain. If we were to ever expand our interests there and it causes trouble, certainly that could end up being a casus belli for war. If the other side was not an equal, shouldn't they need to be worried about the other party had done and match their behavior to match the situation, right? I want to admonish those two carefree couple. The problem was about the rights for mining. Oh well, in the first place it's not about who owns the mountain. Now, I'm going to officially proclaim and made myself well known, thus if there were any races that were objecting to my rule or my person, they will obviously show their hostility in the behavior. Well, non-intervention was good. Although I could easily crush them, as much as possible I want to foster good relationship with them. Responding the more or less impertinent conduct, let's just close one eye at that. 18. Continuing after that were two races, these were the Gazu and Mezu. Both races were on bad terms with each other, from what I've heard they have continuing their war for 100 years. Even so, they came together even if they oppose each other. The atmosphere was so tight that it felt as if the two representatives would break out into a fight at any moment though for the time being they restrained themselves while in my presence. And. Yo, Demon Lord Sama. We, Gazu are useful in war, you know? Will you lend your help destroying the poor Mezu? Gazu representative. HMPH, don't be stupid. As the Demon Lord have a sharp eye. There's no need to hesitate, form an alliance with us the Mezu. Let alone Gazu. We will massacre all monster that dare to disobey. Mezu representative. What a troublesome bunch is rather than passionate, that had come here. However, in the moment when I saw those fellows, an idea flashed inside my mind. That's right. Speaking about labyrinth, it must have mind tor. Such thing like, weren't the Gazu really suitable as boss character? I want them. I want them by all means, as a boss unit. I want to leave them around 30th floor. Such feelings continued to pour out after my initial idea. However, on the contrary of such feelings, these monsters were having low loyalty towards me. A good employer was able to do these kinds of things. And, it was really obvious, that their ulterior motive was using me to destroy the other. I winked at Shin. Shin was going like eh? Is it okay? After she showed such expression, immediately a wicked smile began to sprout on her face. You all are in the presence of my king, there is a limit for disrespect. If you all do not give appropriate courtesy, you had best prepare yourselves to receive suitable treatment. To summarize what happened, both of them were beaten up viciously. It didn't take even one minute. Both of their clan youngsters that they had taken with them had no time to interfere. It was a very quick work. With a single glare, the subordinates of the two were silenced, Shin then bowed to me. With this, all was fine. These fellows were different from the Tengu before, I could use them. Or rather, I could use them without any reservation. In the first place, in their 100 years of war they were repeatedly looting each other, yup, an annoying and troublesome duo of races. Actually, in case of their fighting strength, they might above the Ogre 19. In simple combat, either one of them could be called the strongest race in the Great Jury Forest. I don't know just how many of them could qualify for rank A though. However, that racial conflict that has been raging in for 100 years has been constantly causing trouble for the surroundings. Before the other race raised their complaint, I think it was not a problem to give them punishment. You guys seem to have plenty of excess power, so I will prepare the stage for you guys to meddle it out. If you oppose, what await you guys is only destruction. However, if you manage to achieve victory, it would be useful as appeal to me, 
think about this well. At best, you should strive yourself for victory with your utmost effort. Rimuru. I declared exaggeratedly while not permitting them to raise any objection. At the same time, I erased my presence while at the same time released the entire Othman Lord's Haki with the intent to slightly intimidating them. Perceiving such presence, the Gazu and Mezu fall prostrating. They begin to trembling and shaking, there wasn't the slightest hint of the insolent attitude that they had earlier. Eh? Should I omit Min Lord's Hackle from the beginning? No, there's no need to be excessive. Besides, I'm fairly certain it was more effective if it was omitted at the right time. Anyway, I will make these two people participate in the tournament. And then, suitably, I put them to work at the labyrinth. In my head, there was only joy because I obtained such good boss materials. We will strive with all our hearts to meet your expectations. Therefore, we beg you for your forgiveness for our rudeness. The duo, Gazu and Mezu. So it turned out like that, though I didn't pay any attention to the two and their frantic, pleading voices. Those two poor subordinates left with pale face, the other races outside could only guess wildly as to what event had transpired. After that, the other audiences progressed smoothly. Though there are several selfish races, there weren't any of them that pushed their luck too far like what the Gazu and Mezu had done. With such feeling, I end the audience with me. But, the people who were having the last audience were bringing a problem. Color coded for your convenience. The translation note with green color is from Yakuri on Yaisen. The red is from Giro. Black is shared. 1. This Gukakatori. 2. The business opportunity seems good. Like that. 3. Kagami Machi literally mirror rice cake, is a traditional Japanese New Year decoration. It usually consists of two round machi, rice cakes, the smaller placed atop the larger, and a daidai, a Japanese bitter orange, with an attached leaf on top. Nowadays it is usually placed in a household Shinto altar, or kamidana. 4. Kami Dana are miniature household altars provided to enshrine a Shindo Kami. 5. Shirio, Kama can mean head, chief, leader. Chief sound better than head. 6. He is using Kigo, polite talk here. 7. We forgot to translate this line before. 8. Triant equals written as tree min race read as triant. 9. Dryad equals written as tree fairy read as dryad. 10. Child. Shorty, Midget. 11. Also known as condominium in international law. 12. Equals Kiraku Chiden, Cebu Pointo, written as record site read as save point. 13. Tenu equals written as long nose race read as Tenu. 14. Gazu equals written as ox head race read as Gazu. 15. Mezu equals written as horse head race read as Mezu. 16. Their race kanji mean long nose. 17. Believe me, this will bite her back, thousands foldly. 18. In other word. Ignore it. 19. Ogre equals written as great on a race read as ogre. White's corner. Why? Well, with that, it's complete. I had intended to get it done on the 7th, but various events caused me to push it back. At any rate, now it's done and ready to be released. I suppose since I'll be editing more pieces, I'll have to think up of some interesting to use besides just the samurai lair. Black. That's simple, just throw us into a short story with plenty of action. You're a decent writer, think of something that won't bore me. I mean them. Why? Gyro's Corner, starting Gyro and? Sorry for delay guys, been busy these days. BTW do mana sound better than magic power for the translation from Nomoto. Gyro. Tell us if you find any mistake. I will correct it tomorrow, Gyro. Yakuri on the Aizen's corner. Um. Nah, I'm too lazy. If you find any errors, broken links, non-standard content, etc., please let us know report chapter so we can fix it as soon as possible.